everybody, and welcome back to the 50-day property challenge brought to you by the Enterprise Development Property Fund and Private Property. Today, we wrap up the entire 50-day challenge because we are now at the end of week 10. We'd like to thank Jared and Matt L for their engagement with us and the process that we've run through these last 10 weeks where we help them to purchase for Jared, in Jared's case, his first property, but in Matt Al's case, her third and even fourth property. As you have seen in the previous uh, sessions, Matt Al is now finalizing her third and fourth property, and Jared has already taken transfer um, of his property, which was a bit unexpected because actually, um, during 50 days, we don't really expect you to take transfer yet. All we really expect you to do is to decide on your strategy, go and find the deals, make the offer, raise your capital, and then wait for the transfer to happen. But because Jared actually had his funds available, he was able to actually take transfer during the 50 days. So congratulations to him and congratulations to Matt Al for being at that stage now where she is finalizing her third and fourth deals already. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, she will also take transfer. They are still in the program for another three more years. Um, and this first part of the program, the 50 day challenge was really just to test their metal and to see how quickly they can start their portfolio. So yeah, we've decided today Instead of wrapping up with Matt L and Jared, because we've already done so with them, we decided today to bring uh, some of our students into the 50-day challenge to see where they are at in their process and where they started, what they wanted to do, and um, how long they've been on the program and what they've achieved thus far. So I'd like to welcome into the room today, Mark Quickfall, Dwayne Duplessis, Yolanda Eli, Brent Lechet, and Kanisile Makaya. So the first question that I'm going to ask, and we'll start with Mark, we'll move on to Dwayne, Yolanda, Brent, and then Kanisile. Um, how long you've been on the program? And when you started the program, what did you expect from the Enterprise Development Property Fund? Mark? Hi, Nigel. Uh, I started in 2019, and I thought I was going to get a house for free. <laughs> Didn't turn out that way. <laughs> it takes some work. <laughs> yeah, so I started in 2019, and as I told you before, I'm not leaving. So I don't know if I'm supposed to say that for this video, but uh, you've got me for life now, eh? Partnership for life. No, that is for sure. So uh, we, you and I have had that conversation and I think it probably is uh, echoed throughout the entire um, student body of the Enterprise Development Property Fund that once they start with us, that they actually never want to leave because of all the support that you guys get and all of the fundraising opportunities there are uh, within the program. So you've been with us since 2019, um, but unfortunately because of COVID, you haven't graduated yet because you haven't completed the entire course. Even though, as far as I know, you've already bought your first property, am I correct? Yes, 100% correct. Uh, we're in process now of a couple of more, but I'll give you some more details later when I get my chance. Fantastic. Um, Dwayne, can I ask you the same question? When did you start and uh, what did you expect? Because um, I, if I, my understanding is correct, you and Mark have actually partnered in your business in order to build a portfolio. Is that right? Yes, that's correct, Nigel. I started uh, the course in, tw in 2020, so I'm in my third year. And um, what I expected from the program was um, to bridge that gap between taking deals and connecting them to people with finance or money. And, and so the EDPF, that is my expectation to take the deals that I had on the table, but to close it, I didn't have the, the knowledge or the expertise. So it was to bridge that gap, that knowledge gap. And um, yeah, that is my expectation. And I must say, uh, I'm, I'm getting that support from, from the EDPF, yeah. That's, that's fantastic to hear. I'm so glad that we actually were able to, uh, other than Mark who wanted a house for free, um, we were able to meet your expectations, <laughs> which is fantastic. I'm so glad that we were able to do that. Yolanda, 
same question to you. Um, you you are now a first year, I think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, fresh, fresh out of class. So I started in Feb this year and my expectation was just to get to know what I don't know. Like you think, oh, I'm just going to go buy a house and rent it out and then it's going to make money. But then when you start and you're just like, oh, there's so much knowledge that's just, it's not given to you. So you have to go out and find it. And I think I've definitely found it. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm, I mean, you you actually amaze me because uh, just just like with Brent as well, who's a first year, um, we've had some conversations one on one, and uh, I I very quickly realized that actually you already have what you need. All you needed to do was identify it and then take and then actually access the opportunity that was available to you already. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so um, I see Kanya Ngoniyama has joined us as well. Uh, welcome Kanya, we'll uh, get to you um, as soon as possible. But uh, just quickly Brent, uh, you are also first year, am I correct? That's correct, yes Nigel. Also started what was your expectation? Um, yeah, no, look, um, it was of course to learn how to start a property portfolio um, and also just to educate myself further on um, property in as a whole because what I found is is that I mean you read you read all these books all the years um, and you've always you see what guys do and what people do but then you yourself are also you're still lost because there's this missing piece of okay so this guy bought it through a company a uh, property through a company but how did he actually know about it um, who did he speak to how does you how do you go about your tax? So EDPF has kind of it's bridging those gaps, so to say. So yeah, no, I'm loving it this far. Fantastic! I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, can you see the same question to you? Um, you started, I think, last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, you, what what were your expectations of the program? Yes, yeah, so I started um, last year, and my expectations were simply that um, I had a project, but I didn't have a property business. So I really wanted to move from having just one project to really having a property business. Uh, those were my expectations. And I think, secondly, I really just wanted to be around people who were speaking the same language, um, supporting each other in the space. All right, fantastic, and I, and I think uh, you definitely have found that. You found people who, um, like you say, speak your language, but also are there readily available to support you in building your portfolio, because ultimately that's what we're here for, is to help you to build your portfolio. So I'm glad that you found a group of people that, that have that same uh, sort of outlook in life. All right, Kanya, uh, Kanya uh, Ngonyama, um, you've joined us now. Uh, after we started, but uh, the first question that I've asked everybody, which I'm going to ask you as well, is how long you've been in the program, if I'm not mistaken, you've been here since 2020. Um, and what did you expect when you joined uh, the EDPF Academy? Yes, Nigel, you are correct. I joined since 2020. And my expectation was that it's going to be more uh, like just online courses, uh, just learning and just doing only the online courses and then after doing each course just getting a certificate but my expectations have been exceeded because the support in obviously uh, getting the financial um like uh, raising the finance for property deals that's the part that has exceeded my expectations and also being around other like-minded property entrepreneurs Fantastic, fantastic. It's a pity that, I mean, with most of you guys, you started 2020, 2021, and now 2022, we've, we've come through this phase of, um, of being under lockdown. And unfortunately, that meant that we couldn't meet one-on-one -on -one face to face. But we have had quite a bit of engagement uh, via Zoom and Google Meets and so on. Lots of webinars where we could at least connect with one another. And even with Mark and Dwayne, as an example, Mark's a 2019 candidate, Dwayne's a 2020 candidate, but together they've actually started a business. So I just want to quickly catch up with you, uh, Mark and Dwayne, about that. Um, how did you find each other? And how did you come to create a company together uh, in order to actually get your portfolio going. Uh, Dwayne, let's ask you first. Oh, so um, I don't know if you remember, Nigel, I think it was in 2020, uh, I was invited to a seminar, I think one of Anton's seminars where they discussed 
um, the strategy of how you set up your entity with a trust and able to then uh, leverage 100% fund finance at the bank. So I had this idea of being three or four guys within a company to increase our affordability, which I then did. Uh, but then I shortly found out that uh, it's not as simple as just buying uh, 100% or, or getting 100% to 110% bond finance. We still needed some capital. Yeah. And at the time, I was uh, discussing the, the, the business with Mark. And he came along and he brought some, 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 some capital along. And then that's how we basically teamed up and then started um, looking at deals. And we obviously then closed our first deal. The second deal fell through. But um, yeah, that's actually how we came or, or how, how we formed our business and how, and how we partnered. Fantastic. So Mark, um, your business, you structured in a, uh, in a way where there's a trust involved, there's a company involved, and then you start buying properties. T- tell us a little bit about that structure and uh, and how that came about. Yeah, I actually, um, I was really fortunate that when it actually started that process with Anton, and um, when I came in, the, the trust was set up, and uh, we started the company, and all the shares in the company is actually in the trust. None of us are shareholders in the company are uh, sitting in the trust. So... Um, I'm now, we're still busy with the amendments. In fact, that I'm going to become a beneficiary and a shareholder in the trust. Um, that's what I learned from the EDPF, by the way, Dwayne, too. Um, you know, you need to safeguard yourself and you we put this stuff in the trust. So all the shares are laying in the trust. Fantastic. Oh, and by the way, I met Dwayne. I met Dwayne uh, when he came for his orientation in first year and I saw him sitting there looking lost. <laughs> So I went up to him and I said, hi, you know, I can buy a for bar. So I went up and said, hi. So, and it just started. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so um, just for those who don't know, Anton is one of our lecturers. We've got 27 volunteer lecturers um, that work in the EDPF program uh, that teach anything from uh, property management to uh, how to raise capital, uh, legal aspects of property, due diligence, feasibility studies, all of that sort of thing. 27 lecturers who work voluntarily in the EDPF program. Uh, And Anton is just one of those guys who who has blessed the EDPF with their time uh, and and help our students to do all sorts of things like structuring their deals, structuring their company and so on. So Kanya, let's uh, jump to you. You, um, You had a portfolio when you started with the EDPF. Um, and you are now busy building onto that portfolio by growing uh, your your company. So I think you had something like seven or eight properties before, and you are now busy finalizing two other deals where you're going to add another seven million rands worth of properties to your portfolio. Uh, tell us how that's going. Yes, Nigel. So w- w- when I started off, I actually had seven apartments before I, I joined EDPF. But uh, ever since now I joined, I'm currently now going into the multi lab space and also into the student housing space. So w- what happened is that uh, about a month after joining EDPF, as, as you may remember, there was a, a block of flats in Cherryfontaine, Joburg, which is, uh, is, is uh, a, a deal that has been concluded, but the transfer is currently happening now as we speak. And also they, there was also a student building in Port Elizabeth where the, the funding for it has just been approved by TAP. So that will also be going through soon. So uh, I, I started off like just being like in your, your sectional titles, but I realized that the problem with sectional titles, yes, it's a good way to start as an investor, but the levies can actually uh, lessen your profits. Hence what I'm going into multi lets yeah, that's a, that's a true true story that you've got there in terms of the, the fact that um, having a property that is within a complex um, where you actually don't have control over the over the entire complex, those levies can become very heavy very, and very expensive and cut into your cash flow when you uh, when you purchase them. So your your uh, sort of flip from going. Uh, into single residential within a complex into yeah. uh, the multi uh, kind of scenario where you're buying one example, where you're buying a block of flats with 10 units in it, you're actually buying the entire block, which is which is phenomenal. And we at the EDPF are helping you 
uh, to do that. So, um, we, I mean, as always, we, we're glad to be part of that journey uh, where we're allowing you or helping you to not only structure the deal, but to also raise yeah. the capital. Um, Kanisili, um, when you started with us, you were nearly complete in a process of building a block of 66 units. Uh, tell us a little bit about the support you've received from the Gauteng uh, Partnership Fund um, and how that's been going since you joined the EDPF. Okay, great, wonderful. In 2013, the EEPF, uh, which is the Emerging Property Developer Program, um, I applied around 2013, 2012, 2013, but it had probably opened about two or three years before that. And I was a successful applicant in 2013, but I really didn't get a, a deal going until about 2014, 2015. It took me a while to find the right property that was affordable, but eventually um, I found a property on auction in Benoni and um, it fitted my budget. And, and so I bought in Benoni and then I then went back to the GPF the Gauteng Partnership Fund to apply and I was successful. So initially when we were taken onto the program, we were meant to do deals of about 20, uh, 15 million Rand. But I think the idea at the time was that um, GPF would hold my hand for a bigger deal because you know it was quite a large space. It was um, 3,400 square meters and it allowed 66 units. So that's how I really then went on to do what is in my mind the mega deal, um, which was the 66 units. Um, and yeah, it's just been an incredibly amazing journey, um, a very challenging journey. Um, and, and I've had all sorts of challenges. For instance, um, there were almost two years when my contractor did not have money to continue with the building. In hindsight, I think if I was already in the EDPF program, we would have then launched a legal play around replacing the, um, the contractor, but it didn't happen. And so it delayed the project. And um, when I was then done with the project about a year ago, um, the municipal regulations around fire had changed. And so then I really needed um, your help, Nigel, and, the, and that of the EDPF to then move, you know, the transaction along. Um, and yeah, I think we would need a whole <laughs> um, hour to discuss um, all the challenges. But I think, I think we're almost there. We're almost there with, with the project, yeah. Mm. But I think also, I mean, at the end of the day now, we, in fact, not even a week or two ago, we finalized with the Gauteng Partnership Fund that they would extend your facility, that they would mm. uh, capitalize the interest that has built up over this period mm. because of this delay with the municipality, that they, in fact, actually then uh, secured a meeting with the municipality to try and resolve this issue. Um, and mm. hopefully in the next uh, four to six weeks, you'll be able to get your occupational certificate, am I correct? Yes, indeed. Um, that's, that is the plan. Um, yeah, because, I, you know, with that occupational certificate, at least we can start tenanting um, and trying to, because it's a lovely building, it's mm. ready. It just needs the occupational certificate. No, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Look, I've seen pictures. I haven't been there myself, but I've seen pictures and it is absolutely beautiful. And I think you're going to be hugely successful once you get your occupation certificate. Thank okay, you. guys. Uh, so we're going to take a bit of a break uh, for a minute uh, just to pay the bills. And then we'll be back uh, shortly after this. Welcome back, everybody, and uh, you, we are here today with uh, some of our students on the Enterprise Development Property Fund program. Um, thanks to uh, Private Property for their support over the last 10 weeks. As we wrap up today, um, we wish to again congratulate both Matt, Al, and Jared for the successful journey that they've had with us over the last uh, 50 days. Right now, we are busy talking to six of our students who have been in the program since uh, from 2019 until, the, in fact, this year, we've got two new students, Brent and Yolanda. Um, and those students are 
uh, here with us today, just talking about their journey, what they expected from the EDPF and where they are now. So we've already quickly caught up with Mark and Dwayne in terms of where they are at, uh, Kanye as well as Kani Sili. Uh, but right now, I just want to chat with uh, Brent and Yolanda because they are brand new in the program. They've only been with us for about two or three months. Um, and already both of them have secured some, uh, some deals or, or structure where they would be able to generate income from a property portfolio, if not immediately within the next couple of months or maybe even a year or so. So let's start with Brent this time. Uh, Brent, we had a conversation not so long ago where we won't mention your company's name, but you work for a, a, a company that does developments. Um, and we were talking about you not being able to find the right deals and I said something to you about the deal sitting right under your nose. Um, if you recall that conversation, maybe just uh, give us a brief of what it is you then did. Okay, so a long story short, I work for a property development company and my company is currently doing a development out in Somerset West. So yeah, it has always been, it's, it's, a, it's, a bit it's is a challenge to find the correct deal, to find you know, something that will, something that you can afford to buy. And um, well, after my conversation with Nigel, Nigel just um, brought it up to me, he asked what I did, and he asked me what the developer was busy with, and um, then he said, okay, why don't you just have a chat with um, your director and ask if you could get a deal. <laughs> and the deal is getting a, securing one of our units at cost price. Um, so I, Initially, I won't lie, was quite skeptical. Um, I actually, after our, my Zoom call with Nigel, I gave my director a call and um, I asked him the question up straight, look, are you willing to give me a one of the units at cost price? And I was surprised he actually said yes. So yes, that will be taking place. We're starting with construction end of April. So yeah, this year, that will be one of the deals that I will be securing and yeah, maybe it should be, it will actually be my first property. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just so glad. So it, it really warms my heart that just in one conversation with you, we were able to see and secure a deal. In fact, I remember that day when uh, we were on the, on the Zoom call and you said your boss was going overseas or something the next day. So I said, well, there's no time to waste. Let's stop the score, go talk to him now. And then you WhatsApp me like to, to say, the deal's done, you got one of the, one of the properties. So I, you know, I, I'm just so glad that we were able to be part of that journey as well, where you are now within a couple of months of being in the program, you've already secured your first deal. And hopefully that will just help you to grow from strength to strength because with once that development is done, mm -hmm. most likely because you got it at cost, when, the, when it's complete, that property will probably be worth about 40% more than what you bought it for. So you can either sell it, make, take a profit and then buy your next, make your uh, next deal happen or mm -hmm. leverage it in order to then take the capital there, the equity that is left in it in order to then go and do your next deal. So instead of uh, selling and buying an, an one more, you can actually use the equity to buy a second property and start building your portfolio rather than starting your portfolio over again. So, uh, so I'm very glad that we were part of that, uh, that deal as well. So congratulations on that. So let's jump to Yolanda. Yolanda, you and I also had such a similar conversation, except that your properties were actually already in your hands and that I, I, I told you to do something else. Just give us a brief of, of what that conversation was about and, uh, and where you are at with that process at the moment. So I actually had a prop, I had I, I bought land in 2014 with the, with the normal, this is what people do. You buy land, you'll be like, I'll build my retirement house there one day. And then obviously I'm far from retirement. So I was like, it's still there. Um, but we're actually going to start building, developing that land to let so that it can start generating money and, you know, just paying the rates every month and be like, oh, it's fine, it's paid for, it's okay. Um, there's also different pockets of land that are discovered through the EDPF that you can actually build more than one, prop, one house on one property. So using that idea, there's lots of homes available with big backyards and so we are going to 
delve into that space with um can i say the name of the company that yeah, you gave no, me if you, yeah no if you want um, to, yeah. so i'm going to be in contact with bitprop just to see what that um structure is about and how we can actually go about developing places for people that's affordable to live in whether it's a backyard development or starting a whole new development on a random piece of land that the council's not doing anything on. yeah that's awesome yeah no bitprop is one of those organizations that support the edpf program we've got 56 such companies that either support through services or funding like BitProp does. Um, and uh, everybody who's on the program have access to these companies, whether it be uh, quantity surveyors, town planners, architects, lawyers, accountants, tax consultants. You guys have access to all of those people at a hugely discounted rate. And in some cases, they don't even charge for the services that they give you. So I'm very glad that we could at least give you that kind of support. And hopefully that will allow you to build not just on this one piece of land that you've got, but on many such uh, properties. I know you, for example, with your sister, um, you, you've also got a family uh, a piece of land with a building on it that you, we spoke about possibly uh, building on there as well. And, and you, many other opportunities that you, that you potentially have. So while I have you now, let's, let's ask you the next question. So what, what is going to be your strategy? And I think because of time, we're going to end with this question for everybody. Uh, now that you've been in the program for a couple of months, couple of years with the rest of the guys, what is your strategy going forward? What are you going to pursue from an investment perspective? So I'm going to start with um, buy to let, but with the eventual, like the end goal is going to be develop to either develop to sell or develop to let. It depends on how the, how the world goes. But I definitely do want to get into building affordable houses in spaces that people actually need to be. So okay. if you work 60 kilometers away from home, there's a piece of land close to where you are. For sure. <laughs> no, for sure. I can build Absolutely. your house for you to buy. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Brent, your, your strategy going forward? Um, well, yeah, no. Um, literally my main thing is just going to be focusing on cash flow so seeing the residential will then later focus on multi-lets um commercial space of course is like everyone knows is standing a bit still at the moment um but yeah ultimately becoming a property full-time property investor and developer so we are am currently working to do that on a larger scale um, focusing on low-cost housing focusing actually across the entire array low-cost housing um, or so to say, houses for our middle class as well. And yeah, I don't think I'll probably move into the upper class, but yeah, focus on middle and lower class houses. Awesome. That's yeah. a that's a good strategy to be in because um, that uh, sort of area or range uh, between sort of the 450 and 1.4 million rand, that's really where you want to be because that's where the huge demand is at the moment. So fantastic. Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I, I, I'm, uh, I'll be happy to... Uh, help you in that journey to achieve your goals as well. Uh, Kanya, um, what is your, your sort of strategy for the future? I know you're now moving into multi-lets, but we also spoke about possibly going into some commercial as well. Yes, Nigel. So my strategy, besides now just uh, building the, the multi-let uh, business as it is and scaling it up with a particular focus on student accommodation, but the, the plan is also to uh, go into development, especially now, you, I mean, uh, thanks to you, EDPF, you mentioned the, that the DBSA is actually looking to increase the student housing stock in South Africa. So um, the, the, the plan now, after just uh, growing the current multi-led portfolio, will be to say to, to estate agents, uh, please find me a plot of land, not too far from a university. And then obviously, uh, I, I would like to prepare a proposal with the help of EGPF uh, so that we can get the funding from DBSA. So that is the current strategy going forward. And also, in, when you also introduced us last year to, to Upstar Future Rental Income, they will also be in the picture when it comes to scaling the current multi uh, business. Fantastic. That is awesome. Okay, Kanisili, um, I know where you're going because you want to build plenty of these blocks of flats. Um, hopefully with the help of Gauteng Partnership Fund and other institutions. Um, but uh, give us a, a clear understanding. What is your strategy going forward? 
So my strategy is also affordable housing. Um, I'd like to be as close to the inner cities as possible, even um, in the inner city itself. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if I have the stomach right now to, to do a greenfield, but I would love to do a conversion. Um, even if, you know, it's about a hundred units at once, but um, I, I just love to do a brownfield. Um, uh, yeah, so, so really that's where I'm going multi-let. I'd love to look at student accommodation. I thought after COVID um, that market was done for, but it's interesting to hear that um, it's growing again and there's demand. So um, yeah, I'm gonna look at opportunities there. Fantastic. The amazing thing about student accommodation, there's always a half a million beds short. So there's always <laughs> demand in the student accommodation space, which is fantastic. Um, Dwayne, uh, your strategy, um, I would assume that your strategy is interlinked with Mark's because of your company, but uh, what is your strategy going forward? So our strategy is with, um, with the current business that we have is to do multi-lets. Um, we initially wanted to do buy to let but we discovering, or oh, we, we, pref we prefer the, the, the cash flow um, that the multi let offers you. So that would be our strategy in terms of that business. And with regards to the other business, we're looking at, um, I would say, affordable housing and student housing as well. And then obviously trying to put the project together for DBSA. We mm. want to be the first guys in Cape Town. Fantastic. Um, Mark, you guys are busy working on a project in, uh, in Mitchell's Plain as well. So affordable housing sort of is your thing at the moment. Um, uh, that, is that going to be your strategy going forward or do you have something else in mind? You've created a monster, Nigel. <laughs> with, I'm aware. with you opening up my eyes and having my back, you know, I've got confidence to go into bloody anything. Sorry, uh, into everything <laughs> or anything. <laughs> But at the moment, um, you know, uh, the, the sourcing, that's what we're doing at the moment in Mitchell's yeah. Plain, uh, DBSA, multi-let, anything. If there's an opportunity, we are willing to tackle it because, you know, you've got our back. If you're in doubt, call Nigel. If you aren't, <laughs> you have called Nigel. So. <laughs> and I think on that note, thank you very much, everybody. Mark, Dwayne, Yolanda, Kanisile, Kanya and Brent for joining us on this wrap-up of the 50-day challenge uh, on our final week and our final wrap-up. Thank you again to Matt L and, uh, and Jared Ricketts, who has been part of this journey for the last 10 weeks. And thank you most especially to Private Property for uh, supporting us in this program and for allowing us this platform to speak to the public about how you too can start your property journey in 50 days. If you want to know any more, uh, join us on our website, www.edpfpropertyacademy.com, where you can uh, get the, some free training there, um, or you can join the academy um, and get uh, your Huawei 10 inch tablet with 20 gigs of data per month um, and all the learning, uh, hundreds of hours of learning, uh, per, uh, and as well as um, support services, access to opportunities, and access to finance. For the last time, this is Nigel Adrianza of the EDPF Property Academy signing off for the 50-day property challenge and good luck to you as you build your property portfolio. Sadly, we've come to the end of the EDPF 50-day property challenge. Brought to you by EDPF Property Academy and Private Property. We've run our competition again and the winner for this last round is Kumeshni Gobinsami. Congratulations, Kumeshni, and welcome to the EDPF Property Academy family. What you have won is access to the EDPF Academy, support services, our 10-inch Huawei tablet, and 20 gigs of data for three full years. As you enjoy your experience with us, we are hopefully going to be able to help you to build your own property portfolio. But for those of you guys out there that have been watching faithfully, thank you for being with us. Thank you for enjoying these 50 days with us. And we hope that you also have started your journey into property investment. For the very last time, this is Nigel Adrian saying goodbye on behalf of the EDPF Property Academy and Private Property.